impressed me the most is how he looks on the motorcycle. He looks like a different kid riding a bike. Why the feet are so important is because it's the lowest point from bike to ground, meaning the foot that. Everything you do in life is on your toes. I have to be unlocked, and that's why James can turn under some of the best riders in the world by making his corner so sharp and so quick. And uh, push me like a man for snot. When you're in this position here, your core is running. Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, there's jumps out there that, you know, scares the crap out of you. And, but, I mean, if you want to win and you want to do good, you got to do it. You know, I know there's been some jumps that every lap I'm just going, man, come on, one more time, one more time, one more time, one more time. And then, uh, you know, but you got to be able to focus, you got to be able to kind of, you know, keep that fear out of you and, um, you know, be able to, so you can do it every lap. And that's what it takes. If you want to be the best or win, you got to almost do, sometimes you got to do stuff you don't want to do. As you see, we got a rhythm section coming up. So you want to make the rhythm section. You want to come, be able to come in the corner smooth. You don't want to be coming in this corner sideways, where you're going to have to screw up speed. And as you see, I hit the turn on the where the turn begins. So then I can use the whole turn. I'm on the brakes until about right here, and then I hit my gear down. When my front wheel gets here, I start looking here to find out where I'm going to hit the jump. And now from here, I can see the jump where the high spot is and where the low spot is. 
and on 125 you want to hit the high spot because it's a far jump. So I'm on the gas here and when I start exiting the corner, right when I start hitting, you know, feeling the power to the end, I hit the next gear. When I'm coming up to the jump, I'm holding my breath. No. <laughs> I'm committed right here. I'm committed. So right about Say here on the jump. I start standing and lifting with the bike And when I hit this jump right here The bike is completely up into my chest Lifting up with the bike legs arms so I can get over the jump and As you can see on the jump There's a little bit of a high spot right in the middle you know, it doesn't take much. Sometimes it's only a few inches, a foot, a little steeper, whatever it is. Normally on a jump, you always want to find the low part. But on a jump that you're trying to lift, get as much air as you can to get over it, you want to find a little bit of a higher spot. And right here in the middle is the highest spot. Yeah, as all of you 80, 60, 125, 250F riders, if they're watching this video, know about some jumps that you can't get over. You're barely getting over it. And uh, in this video, you'll watch myself coming over the, these jumps that I can barely get over on my 125, but I'm hitting them in the correct gear. I'm back on the bike a little bit, trying to compress that back end to get the bike to lift up the most. Right when that front end starts coming up, I'm lifting up with the bars, pulling it into my chest and pulling the bike up as high as I possibly can. So when I'm up in the air, I'll be up in the air as, as long as I can. I know that's different from the other things I've said, but these jumps are different. You got to try to get over them. And once you pull the bars into your chest and you're at the about the peak height, you want to start pushing your bike, pushing the bars forward to level that bike out. As you can see, my feet are off the pegs bars are in my chest and then you can see me push the bike the bars forward and level that bike out to the landing these jumps here are probably the scariest for the average rider and for the pros um, with jumps like this you kind of want to size them up possibly if you can without hurting yourself or landing too hard is to jump a little bit past the takeoff ramp to see how far it is and uh, you know that's probably the safest and uh, best ways to, ways to size something up so we're going to do it both ways this way without jumping it the next way with with a little bit more gas and sometimes that's all it takes is just a little bit more gas to uh, get over these things but uh, I wouldn't recommend it until you are confident and comfortable with what you're doing. Coming off this jump here, standing up, right when I'm coming into it, I'm standing up and then I get into the bike. Come into the bike, and when I come up, I come back up with the bike. So the bike's squatting down, so am I. Bike's coming up, so am I. I'm going with the bike. And when the bike's coming up, then I lean my body forward to get the front end down, tap the back brake to get it more down, and then over the third one. So it's one movement. You know, with everything's with the bike, never doing something the bike's not doing. When the bike's compressing, so are you. When the bike's extending, so are you. You're coming up with it. 
and the bike's going forward, so are you. You're coming over the bike. Bring tap the back brake, and with your weight, we'll bring the front end down over the third one. You want to compress the back suspension. You want to get that down so when it comes up, it'll get you more air, get you more, more lift. So you kind of want to sit more back here on the bike from the middle to the back, not up front. That'll get you more compression. So you're sitting, coming in here, sitting back, back here on the bike, off the jump, in the air. You're bringing your body forward to bring the front end down, maybe even tap the back brake to get it down more to get it over the third one. So there is one technique up and then how it has a ramp like this, you kind of go with that as sitting on the bike. Come down, down, and then up, and you're coming up with the bike. You know, stuff like this where it's hard packed, there's no, there's no groove, no, there's nothing really to hit. You know, keeping in the middle of the bike, keeping your elbows up, keeping your leg off the ground, but more of it is just steady, consistent power, you know, not getting on it too hard, not getting on it too late, not being too low of a gear. A higher gear on hard pack works better than a lower gear. It might not feel that way, but it, the, the tire is always tracking. If you get, if you're in too low of a gear, the wheel's always spinning. And it's, that's one hard thing for people to get used to is kind of almost lugging your bike a little bit than always being on the gas where you can in uh, deeper, deeper dirt. If you come in braking hard with your front end, you're going to have a front end push. If you come in braking with your back end hard, you're gonna, the back end is going to want to come around. And uh, so if you come in with both of them uh, and be consistent and easy on the braking, you're going to have you know, good traction. Hard pack stuff, you can lock your brakes up, lock your tires up a lot easier than you can when it's when it's loamy. So again, everything is uh, is being very consistent and almost easy. Easy on the brakes, easy on the gas. In the middle of the corner, you gotta sit up front more because you gotta get that front end to track. You gotta put weight on that front end to, to stick. But when you're coming out, then you can slide back and get the traction uh, in the back end and keep that front end light. Now if this turn was flat and it had traction, you could get on it and be a little bit more aggressive, but with the flat, hard track, you gotta take your time. And coming into a hard, flat corner is better to do it 10 out of 10 times good than, than 5 out of 10 times. Now we do it race pace. Come down and hit, got a hill here, it's a little bit slick, a little bit hard, got a bowl turn here. So you want to come on the outside to use the whole turn. Once you get into the turn, look ahead where you're going to the jump. I'll do it again. Here we have a long straightaway coming into a bowl turn here. So you want to start on a bowl turn, you want to start where the bowl starts and end where the bowl ends. Then you keep your momentum. So you come in here. Right when you get your front end here, stick your foot out, look ahead, and out you come out of the corner. All right, here we have a bowl turn. This bowl turn is pretty blue grooved and hard, so the power delivery is the same as a flat corner. You don't want to get uh, too aggressive with it. You want to be in the right gear. You can be a little bit more aggressive because you have a bank. In a bowl turn, if it's not rutted and it's a nice smooth one, you want to enter it where it starts, you want to exit, exit it where it ends. Then you can keep your momentum up, then you can be on the gas a lot sooner. If you come in, in the middle, skid it, and turn, you're losing momentum. You're stopping and then going. And to me, the fastest way around it is using the whole bowl, kind of like a, uh, kind of like a NASCAR. They don't come in, skid, and turn. They go around to use the whole thing. Um, right when your front wheel enters, you want to be able to look, turn your head and look where you're going. It goes where your eyes go. If you look straight down, you're not going to be able to get on the gas as soon, and you're not going to be able to tell what's coming up as quick. So for me, when you get in there, look ahead, and you'll go where your eyes go, and you'll be out of the corner before you know it.
mistake of a lot of people are is going too far outside in the corner. You know, uh, if you look at this corner, the outside is soft. It has some parts sticking out, so to me it's much easier to make a mistake out there than it is to come inside. Inside, you can hold the same momentum, if not more, and you're cutting off probably the time you get to point B over here, probably about 40 feet of track. So if you measure that out, each each lap would be a pretty big difference. Um, a lot of people think they're hauling ass through there, but really they're spinning because you're not getting any traction because the dirt is loose. So the best part is to come inside, sometimes go a little slower, and you'll notice if you went uh, behind somebody going into the corner and you went in there about the same time, you'd come out ahead of them, or if you just stood up and cruised, you'd come out about the same time and that guy's using so much more energy outside. Standing up, going through a sweeper like uh, like we're showing. Right? Like are, we're showing. Are, are we showing it right now? Are you showing it right now, or is it? Am I? No, we're showing. Yeah. Talking about a sweeper that you're looking at now, a sta standing up. You know, you always want to have your head over the handlebars, um, like you say, so you can look down, see your number plate. If you could, if you stopped and looked at it, you don't ever want to look at it. Um, gripping your bike with your knees. These things are your, those are like the vice, you know? You hold that, that's what controls the bike. This is just turning and, you know, your arms should be loose. A lot of people get arm pump and that's from holding on too tight. You know, I use my legs a lot and that's one reason why I never get arm pump. You know, elbows up, being a high enough gear and always looking far, you know, far enough ahead to know what's coming up so you can miss it, hop over it, wheelie it, you know, go around it, whatever it is. If you're looking right at your front wheel, you're not going to know what's coming up, so you're going to ride tighter. And if you hit a hole, it's a lot easier to crash. Okay, I did it three different ways. I came off the tabletop, I was real aggressive, came in here, wow look at this berm, hit this berm, went nowhere. I couldn't even catch any air off the tabletop. You come in this and you see how soft this is, right here. Your bike just sinks. There's no way you can get any traction coming out of here and I see people all day long hitting this berm, you know? Second time came in here, jumped tabletop, little less aggressive, turned it and I started sliding my back in I just caught the end of the berm with my back in and I was on the tabletop on the gas off it scrubbed off my momentum a little bit when I hit that but I stayed at all this stuff the third one came off the tabletop was the least aggressive slow down early I was out here right here made my turn early cut it back to the inside and I almost jumped the whole tabletop I stayed out of the soft stuff I took my time and I was on the gas sooner, getting traction and almost jumped the whole tabletop. So that's in one turn I had three different ways of doing it and the last way was probably the most consistent. Maybe feels the slowest coming into the corner but is the fastest coming out of the corner and that's where you want to always think of is how you come out of the corners not so much of how you come in. You know, I've always explained in the video to kind of stay out of the powder berms, but, you know, I guess you got to know when to use them, when not to use them. As you can tell when I come into here, I don't try to explode it. I start the turn way up there so I can keep this almost like a sand turn where it's big and flowing so I can keep my momentum. And then out here it starts getting harder, a little bit more grip, and then I can get my traction to come up that hill because this hill is kind of, you know, it's a steep hill. Um, you know, if I came into the inside and tried to square it off and blew into it, I'd lose all momentum. But I keep this berm real big, long sweeper so I can keep my momentum. In a soft corner like this, a higher gear might work a little bit better because you're not just digging into the dirt. Coming out of this corner, you should be able to hit at least uh, another gear going up that hill if you come out of it correct. 
That's why I say it'd be a nice and smooth with the gas. You can keep that nice arc in the corner. If you come in and be real aggressive, whack, and hit it and stuff like that, that might be nice. This will be blown out and this will be nice. So then you have almost three corners. So that's where being nice, easy, throttle control, looking ahead, and you know, being almost patient, you know, is better.